everybody happy Thursday and welcome to the dollar hour I am Deontay Burton aka Mr. Show Dollar himself we got an awesome show planned for you guys tonight because we're dealing with a subject matter that I know everybody has to deal with and that's insurance so we're doing a insurance 101 your know, complete guide to understand insurance because I know a lot of times people have certain terms like uh, claims policy um, uh, insurance policy all the things like that but I want to go through everything break down give you the terms explain to you in language terms and if you guys have any questions about it, feel free to call in. I can explain it to you. Uh, most of you guys know I'm an accountant by profession, but in being an accountant over 25 years, 15 of those years, I cut my teeth in what's called insurance accounting. It was a little different from a regular, you know, general accounting, insurance accounting. Uh, if you just think about it, insurance deal on what's what we call policy years, not calendar years. I'm not going to go into all how complex that is. <laughs> but it's a, it's, a, it's a different way of accounting. So I'm a little versed with the insurance industry because, like I said, I spent that time working for somewhat of an actual insurance company for 15 years in an insurance accounting. So I have a lot of experience with uh, with insurance. So, I, But I, I did want to just have this segment tonight because, again, there are a lot of people with a lot of questions about insurance, exactly what it is, how it's done, how prices come up, why things go up, why things go down. So, again, the nice show we're talking about insurance 101. You'll complete a guide to understand insurance. Uh, before we get started, again, I am Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. This is the Dollar Hour. I want to say what's up uh, first, say what's up to my uh, also producer, DJ Lab. What's going on, brother? It's Thursday. And what's happening Best with day you? of the week. You yeah, brought the rain with you, I see. Hey, man. <laughs> it was 99 degrees before you came through here. Then the rain came through with the thunder and the lightning. Hey, my bad, my bad. <laughs> But other than that, it's just a good day. How was your weekend? Weekend was cool, man. Weekend was cool. Uh, big shout out to my son, Chris Burton. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. He turned 18. Oh, 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 oh. 18. Can't tell you that, man. Yeah. 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 You know, shout out my wife let me come over there and sing happy birthday and stuff. She could have kept me. <laughs> let me stop my shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cynthia, Cynthia McCray said hello from St. Louis. Hey, what's going on, Ms. McCray? How you doing? Uh, she said medical insurance is what she's dealing with. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay. Well, listen, man, I think we're going to have a great show. We start going through everything and stuff because I'm super excited about uh, talking about this subject because I know... A lot of people think they know, but they don't know until you have a situation come up, okay. i.e. prices go up, i.e. get dropped from certain covers and stuff like that. You really don't understand the different parts or different branches of insurance, okay? Uh -huh. uh, I also want to say what's up to my other producer, Slick316. What's up, Reek? What's going on? <laughs> what's going uh, on, Reek? Right now, we stream live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. Again, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. If I might have said it two or three times. Mm -hmm. um, the call in number is 678-740-9894. Feel free to call in if you got any questions about insurance or you want to add anything to the uh, conversation. Again, the call in number is 678-740-9894. We're talking about insurance 101. Your plea guide to understanding insurance. Um, right in with you, well, before I get run of my mouth, before, with all those platforms we're streaming on, the main platform is the Mr. Short Dollar YouTube channel. So whatever platform you're looking at, be it Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. That way if you have to leave in the middle of the actual uh, feed or anything like that, you can come back to the YouTube channel and check out the video in its whole entirety. Also, we got over 700 videos on the YouTube channel for you guys to take advantage of with all the great information. With that said, we also released the... Uh, Remember a couple weeks ago, July 2023 grants. Uh -huh. uh, we did the grants for best grants for veterans. We did over 14 different grants and resources for any uh, veterans want to get in business. Also, yesterday released 2023 best grants for women in business. Small oh, business okay. grants for women. Okay. There's 10 different grant opportunities. So a lot of great information on Mr. Short Dollar. Yeah, just yeah. gotta go get it. Hey, just gotta go get it. You be on YouTube anyway. Hey, before I post the link, go check out the video. Right. What is, what, what, they ask me, damn, you know, you, I tell you. Oh, gotta come. Oh, <laughs> I gotta go get 
Thanks for calling the dialogue. Who am I speaking with? Um, I just wanted to make a, uh, a quick question or say a quick question. Is it possible for someone to be overinsured? Well, okay, good question. The question is, is it possible for anybody to be overinsured? The question is... Yes, thank you. No, 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 no that's fine. Oh, well, that, that, oh, you're quite welcome. Are you going to stay on the line? Because i got to ask a proper question. Okay. Okay, the reason why I ask that when you want to be is being overinsured, number one, it looks at... The question you got to ask yourself, what are your insurance? And what I say, when we look at insurance, insurance is pretty much used to replace items, right? So if something get damaged, something get broke, we want to restore it back to a normal whole self, right? So when you say, are you overinsured, the whole point of being overinsured, if you just say, listen, at the end of the day, you're only going to be getting X amount of dollars from a certain thing. So say there are certain, let's, like, let's take health insurance. Health insurance, you can have uh, health insurance with two different entities, maybe your job, maybe a spouse job. The health insurance is only going to cover so much. They're going to have a ceiling, you know, uh, depending on one insurer. They're not going to come with one and then another one comes back and paying. Typically, the person that's the, uh, the one whose birthday comes first, that's who the insurance will go up over. If you say to yourself that, listen, I want to cover a certain item, i.e. a house, i.e. a car, whatever, the insurance companies are only going to pay so much. And if they see more than one policy, because they share databases on, an, uh, on a universal scale, Certain things are only going to get covered so much. So you can't have multiple policies on a property, multiple policies on a car. So when you say overinsured, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Now, you have multiple life insurances that can cover certain things. You know, theoretically, we had videos before where we talk about life insurance to replace you. So if you got uh, uh, a separate policy outside of your job, just say for 100000 in your job, you got another 100000 that's $200,000. It really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to replace your income, cover certain bills in the event of the demise or something like that, that's fine. But it's just a question depending on what are you trying to do? Is it possible to make sure if any kind of loss is incurred that it can cover that loss? And also actually the amount of money that you're paying in the insurance premium because there are times you can be paying a certain amount of money in premiums and it wouldn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, i.e. gap insurance. Like you might have gap insurance. A lot of times people get gap insurance. And let me know if I'm going too fast or I lose you, please. Cause I know how I get. If you have a situation like a gap insurance when you buy a car, sometimes they'll, they'll include it with a car purchase. I always tell people don't get gap insurance when you buy your car, get it separate with your insurance company. Because gap insurance is the difference between the loan amount and the value of the car. And we know as the longer we are uh, making notes on the car, the loan balance is, is uh, decreasing along with the value of the vehicle. So at some point, you do you still want to be paying gap insurance covering the difference that may have been when you bought the car, 3000 but now the uh, you're in year three, the loan balance and the actual value of the car are the same, but you're still paying a note with that stuff included. So those kind of things doesn't even be beneficial because you can get gap insurance on your car by itself outside the loan, and in year three, you just drop it because it makes no difference because there is no gap. So those are the kind of instances where it may be uh, overinsured because you want to be able to recoup the difference. So those are the kind of things, but it's a it's a case by case basis uh, with doing it. Only thing I would advise people to do is just sit down, do the numbers, talk to somebody that's credible that can give you advice. You know, don't don't talk to your friends that's gonna get an opinion that doesn't really know, but get some credible advice and try to map things out and make sure the math makes sense. Did I answer your question? It does, and I was referencing life insurance, and you answered that when you mentioned the premium. Thank okay. you. Uh, you're quite welcome. I appreciate you calling in. That was fast. <laughs> that was fast. That's a good question when you ask about being overinsured uh, with certain things and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to share even some things even with me uh, with, with insurance. Again, we're talking about insurance 101 uh your complete guide to understanding insurance and i get a quick story with what they said with myself when i was younger let's say i'm gonna say when i was 25 i uh i had half a million dollars in life insurance mm -hmm. just thinking about that because i had what the hell i had I, two kids i think two kids maybe one away but i was just i was a young father and i carried that much life insurance because in the event something happened to me house no kids, tuition, things like that to be covered. Take, take care of. Exactly. So it was a 20-year term policy, 20-year term. We're going to go over those uh, those parts of it, the terms of me and the actual peers, how many years 
the war, so uh, 20 years expired. So fast forward to 45, uh -huh. when that uh, policy expired, I reduced it to a hundred thousand dollar policy. Okay. Because I only had one kid. Uh -huh. I'm looking. He got three grown brothers. Right. At my lifestyle had changed. I I got a little bit more change in my purse uh -huh. and things like that. So it didn't need it. Okay. Assets were. Cool. I, I didn't have to do that. So again, if something happened to me, hey, y'all can sell this and do that and all that kind of stuff. You probably in a better spot than that half million dollar policy. Okay. That was my thought process uh -huh. with it. You know, I don't need to be putting all that kind of money out. Because the older we get, the more expensive we're gonna get. Right. And I'm just like, look, I know y'all can do that, but just bury me and got some little funky damn flyers. <laughs> you know? So my thing of it is just like look, I done gave you way more of that of information in between your ears, so we don't have to really go through that as much. So that was just my thought process. So we started looking at uh, uh, that was an honest assessment that I did with myself mm -hmm. uh, in regards to just having you know life insurance and a lot of times people don't think about it but we always talk about that and check out if you guys get a chance how much life insurance should you be uh, should you be covering I did that video about a couple years ago uh, but we theoretically remember life insurance is to replace you as a person okay you know it's to bury you but also replace you because you and your income you and your income and, and, and future, you know, your income future earnings mm -hmm. and cover our certain debts because like I said I wanted to make sure if something happened to me from 25 to 45, okay, the house taken care of, the boys tuition and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you book this up, that's on you. Right. But I was going to make sure that was done. Now, everybody grown, you know, y'all can help your brother. I'm giving you this, giving you that. You got, there are, there are other assets in place where, you know, you can take advantage of that kind of stuff. Just a different spot in life so I didn't have to look at it. Because uh, insurance was all I had then. Okay. You know, so. No no other assets or anything like that to move around or anything. So it was just a different thought process. But I always tell people, make sure you talk to somebody credible mm. uh, to give you some good advice mm. and bounce the ideas. And that's the wrong bounce the idea against two. Not somebody people. who think. Yeah, shit. Yeah, think. <laughs> I believe. I it believe. Sounds like shit. Right. A bad spot, my brother. A bad I believe spot. you should try this. Man. Have you tried it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and Again, so guys, we talk about insurance one on one. So, what is insurance? Insurance is a risk management strategy designed to protect individuals and businesses from financial losses that may arise due to unexpected events or risks. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's just again, things happen uh, uh, because you know we have something called, going on called life, and in the event something happens or something throws off something damage. Hey, Trey Nicole, how you doing, y'all lady? Appreciate you tuning in. So, in the event something does happen, we have insurance to kind of you will place that particular thing or mitigate or you know uh, shorten the loss that we may have uh -huh. um, and involves transferring a burden of potential losses to an insurance company exchange for regular payments also known as premiums okay and right now we're going to break down some of them key components of what's in, what insurance is and okay. again guys if y'all got any questions regarding not just the information we're talking about we're talking we want to stay on subject about with insurance but if you got any questions about insurance and thing like that your boy's well first with it like i said I, then I, I'm an accountant, but I've worked in property liability, workers' comp, health, you name it. I, I, I've been in those fields, but doing it over, you know, that's for a long time. Right. So I'm a little versed <laughs> with the products. And I can't say and tell you what State Farm going to charge you for this, that, and that. Right. But as far as getting expla explanation on certain products, I got a good good idea of certain things, okay? So one of the key things, the first thing we're looking at is the policy holder. That's the person that's insured. And the policy holder uh, is the person that actually... Uh, gets it. That could be a person, mm -hmm. that could be a family, mm -hmm. that could be a business. And typically, you know, when you're the one that's holding the policy, that doesn't mean the policy is on you. You might have it on someone else, like your okay. children. Like, you know, you say you work, sometimes you can be sure you cover your spouse, you cover your children, you may have a parent or something like that, but you are the person that owns the policy. Okay. You know so what I'm saying? Hold. Yeah, you got to have some kind of vested interest with doing it. You just can't just say, well, look, man, my neighbor, he walk around and look pretty damn sick. They probably die in another year. Yeah, we get some insurance yeah exactly. <laughs> you gotta have some kind of vested interest in okay. this person okay. uh, to be able to do it. Now you can be a caretaker, uh, life partner, okay. uh, whatever you know, or have some kind of relationship. But it has to be something tied to it. You just can't get insurance on certain things. But again, it could be for the person. It could be a business. Uh, 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 whoever can. I mean, not for, but the, the person, that, the, the the individual that's acquiring it, because it okay. can be a business with it. Just like. Oh, my accounting firm, you know, we have what's called errors in the mission. You know, we're the policy holder of that, we own that, 
any kind of mistakes or anything like happen, we own that. Uh, we're, we're doing it. Same thing, just like uh, rental properties. Uh -huh. You know, we have, you know, again, a tenant may have renters insurance. We have liability insurance uh -huh. in just case of fire, dwelling, breaking, right? there you go, dwelling insurance. There you go, appreciate it, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Those kind of products there. So that's, again, the, uh, the policy holder of the person that is insured that, uh, 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 that, that, that owns that particular policy. The next being insurer, i.e. the insurance company. That's the person that's actually uh, uh, offering the coverage of the insurance. They're the ones that assume the risk uh, with doing it. You know, you're gonna have, a, uh, you're gonna go to them and tell them exactly what you have or what you want to cover, i.e. a person, i.e. a business, i.e. an event, whatever. And from that point, you'll just say that they, they'll have a conversation with you to find out what is the actual uh, uh, risk or the amount of coverage you need or what, what, what needs to be protected. Uh, that's why a lot of times, you know, when you buy your home, they'll pretty much, you might have bought a house for 100000 mm -hmm. but your cover may be for three to 400000 Okay, okay. Because, again, it, 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 you know, we have something called, uh, 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 help me out there, but the, the appreciation of the actual value of the house may be more. So, you know, you know they'll do different assessments or whatever. Okay. But if you bought the house, for let's say a hundred thousand dollars, and then you know just say repair costs. Like we 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 know that lumber and a lot of things went up a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Those prices shot up. Right. So if you actually just went off with the you purchased a home for, and now the value is four hundred thousand dollars, you're not going to be able to get the same kind of repair costs with that because everything goes up. Right. Not only did the value appreciate, but we all know the cost of living and everything else goes up. Mm -hmm. So the prices went up with that as well. So that's why you know you typically will see something insured more uh, with that. Just like in your car, with your car insurance, mm -hmm. typically it's going to be insured for more than what it is. Even have attachments like medical and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's what the insurance is. the insurer is. That's the actual insurance company. Guys, feel free to call in. The number is. Uh, shit, I about to forget the damn number. Six seven eight six seven eight seven four zero nine eight nine four. Again, the number is six seven eight seven four zero nine eight nine four. Feel free to call in if you got any question regarding insurance, something running across your mind. It, you know, as long as in the lines of that, you know, just you got a quick question about that'd be a quick question. Just a question about. Feel free to call in six seven eight seven four zero nine eight nine four. Um, you just talked about the policy holder, the insurer being the company, and the next is the premium. Now, I know a lot of times people hear the word premium, and the funky thing about insurance is that when people uh, a lot of times have to get insurance, they just look at costs. Mm -hmm. How much but it's going to cost me a month. Yeah, but they never really see and get into the actual what is this, what is that, why they come with it. And the premium is pretty much the amount of money the policy owner is going to pay the insurer regularly. That mm -hmm. might be every month, every quarter, semi-annual, however you do it. Uh, and that's to maintain the actual insurance coverage. Um, so again, men keep in mind that when you hear the word premium, that's what you're going to be paying uh, the insurer mm -hmm. to cover you. You is guys, that, and that the maintenance of the, of the policy. Uh, they call that, don't, they, don't, they, don't they use the premium as policy, the policy, policy maintenance fee? I don't know that the maintenance fee, the, the insurer, that's just really the cost you're going to pay to get caught in that, yeah. you know, the, the, uh, uh, to keep that. I, I and, thought they called it the maintenance fee, and I could be wrong because they, they um, that's what they charge you each month to maintain that policy to keep it open, I guess. Well, that may be part of the premium. Okay. That might be part of the premium. The, the premium just, you know, whatever that part, like you, they said you got a $100,000 policy, they're saying uh -huh. that you got to get paid on an annual basis $3,000. Mm -hmm. And you can 36, we use the math, 3600 mm -hmm. and they say you need to give us $300 a month or however you want to do it in court or whatever. So the actual maintenance cost probably is tied into the premium. Okay. You know? And when they come with whatever the premium is, uh, that number is brought in by different uh, different factors. Uh -huh. well, you know, risk factors, that being, you know, if it's health insurance, your health, you know, a lot of times you see what they give you a physical. Chris physical, you yeah. You see whatever it is, that take that profile of where you at and kind of just make a risk assessment from there. When you get your car insurance, they're taking that factor of your, your, your driving record, the uh -huh. color of the car, your zip code, all that kind of stuff to take consideration. Right. You get basic liability insurance for your business, what industry you're in, common errors, you know, you know, uh, a lot of stuff is taken into consideration mm -hmm. uh, with doing the thing, uh, with doing it. I always say if you're looking to get in business, have some kind of broker on deck 
where you can kind of figure certain things out because I'm going to tell you something, lad. There are certain industries that people don't think about until they have to get into it. And then insurance be astronomical, mm -hmm. especially when we start looking at medical, uh, daycares and stuff like that. Man, that stuff's crazy. Right. And you think, like, okay, well, it's one thing to be working in a certain place for a certain amount of years. You're great at doing that. But when you start getting those operational costs together and stuff mm -hmm. like that, excuse me, some of that stuff be astronomical. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of folks really underestimate, you know, a lot of the actual fees, you know, that they, they, they get associated with it. So, Especially I'll, when you're a small business owner, you're trying to open, you know, the fee, like, when I used to manage shopping centers, we would, we would, we would require, no matter the size, you know, to put it on the box of the store, the size of the store, mm -hmm. the minimum would be, and that could be just 800 square foot of space, we would require a minimum, a million dollar policy. Yeah. Because have certain things that goes along with that store. Absolutely. Not only the dwelling itself, but people falling, tripping, all that in front of the store, falling in the store. So we would require a million dollar policy on the store itself. Not including what we already have on the shopping center, but yeah. the store, to even lease the, even lease the space, we had to see that policy. Yeah. What's up, Chris? My son, Chris B. And we just said, you just came in late, son. We just said happy birthday happy to you. Happy birthday, Chris. We just said happy birthday. <laughs> my baby boy, and my boy, Chris. And my third son. Happy, happy late birthday, bro. That's right. Oh, uh, But to that point you just said, well, I was just mentioning about, you know, coming in and you make sure you got so much coverage. Uh, lawsuits are real. Mm -hmm. Lawsuits are real. So you got a lot of people that are sitting in the bushes waiting to trip up or fall in a hole or do this, you know, mm -hmm. my neck. My neck and my neck. Shit. <laughs> right. All kind of stuff. We're right. doing it. And just knowing, okay, look, if 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 if, if, if the FedEx truck hits you, I was sitting at I was sitting at a, a intersection going through it and the FedEx driver was turning on the street. And I'm thinking to myself, in her mind, she probably like, get the hell out of my way, I run over you. In my mind, I wish you would. <laughs> I am rolling out of this car screaming. Right. I just I'm just sitting there like, I wish. This damn fair. I mean, just to tap my car. Uh -huh. Tap my car. Just a little bit. Game over. <laughs> Game over. Because I'm talking, we call the stretcher, mm -hmm. the wrecker, every damn thing. Right. Now, I, I, man, and I know her mind, like, look, you holding me up. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's about to go down. I'm shoot the shit out your ass. It's going it's to be Poochie X. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and that is the, the premium. Like I said, pretty much, guys, that premium is the actual uh, amount that you're going to pay that pol uh, the, the policy up there that you have to pay the insurance company to actually hold that insurance. Again, like I said, that, if that numbers came up for that premium is based off several factors that can vary from person to person. Mm -hmm. Me and Laugh can have the exact same car, same price we bought it for, but our insurance premium may be different because based off the risk profile that we have. And everybody has a different risk profile. Mm -hmm. and, and people have to understand that, you know. Isn't that, isn't that attached to your credit too? Think about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I know. I, I've heard certain things. I, uh, 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 as far as the, uh, it's been attached to your credit, but I, I, I don't know that for sure. But I do know at the end of the day, when you know you have certain claims already based on it, the industry, driving records, mm -hmm. health records and stuff like that, that can be, you know, it changes a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of times uh, companies right now, they try to give people incentives to join gyms and stuff like that because premiums are, 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 are through the damn roof. Right. So you can sit in everybody, you know, people may be pro uh, uh, prevalent with heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure and stuff like that. So when they, they're looking at it, you know, you can't discriminate nobody. But they're looking at it like, look, man, we're paying all the astronomical costs on the employee side mm -hmm. to pick up that. You're going to be paid. Like, it got to make sense mm -hmm. to do this. So that's why they try to get those incentives. Not they really, I'm just to be honest with you, I don't think any of them really care about the actual well being of the employees, you know, health or anything. I, well, let me change that. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, a lot of them incentives are given to reduce uh, actual insurance premiums, okay? Remember, mm -hmm. that's the. The premium is the amount that you will pay the actual company, right? Anybody got a question or anything? Uh, 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 Slick says that they didn't used to pull your credit, but now they, they pull your credit at MVRs for the, for the insurance. Yeah, well, I know you got to pull the MVR. Say hey to your mama. Uh, what's up, mama? What's going on? Facebook. 
Mama say, but hey, mama, what's going on? <laughs> she checked me, but I ain't catch her last time. Oh, okay. So I told her we called, she called her late. She came switching over and everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that was insurance premium. The next part is actual insurance policy. Remember what I said, guys? If whatever platform you're going to, you can always go back to Mr. Short Dollar. Chris said, thank you. You got it, bro. Uh, you can always go back to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube to check out the video. It's in entirety if you came in, you know, in the middle of the show. So we already went over the policy holder, the insurer, the, insurer, the premium, and now we had the actual insurance policy. And the insurance policy is, this, uh, is a legal contract between the policy holder and the insurance company. Mm -hmm. It outlines the terms, conditions of the insurance coverage, including what's covered, what's excluded, the limits of coverage, and the responsibilities of both parties. So you ever get a chance to look at your actual insurance policy, a lot of times you'll be able to see, you don't have to even think about you can know exactly what's covered. Mm -hmm. Because so many times, what happens? We assume. We assume. You know what I'm saying? We got into that fender bender. Now we're finding out, hey, listen, I, 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 you know, I, I didn't have enough to cover this. I'm not covered. I, I thought I had roadside. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Right. I thought I had roadside. I thought I had rental insurance just because uh -huh. I got in the red. All that stuff is outlined and actually in your policy. Uh -huh. You'll be able to see that. But uh, far, far too often, we get rushed when we're trying to go through certain things. And what, what I said at the beginning, we're so concentrated on the what? The cost oh, of the premium. The monthly premium. You know, just say, and we'll just ask a simple question. Is it fully insured or is it liability? Mm -hmm. Then all the other shit that we may need to come along with it, we're not even thinking about it or do, try to do any kind of due diligence to make sure it's there. Mm -hmm. But we just say, look, I can't afford this. Mm -hmm. I, this is what I can afford. And they say, look, I can get it down the hill. Cool, run it. Now, again, you might got a shell of a shell. It may be full coverage. Lady line, line, lady love. You came in late. We did discuss life insurance, and we probably double back to it. But you came in late. Got to come at the beginning of the show when it start. But we did discuss life insurance. You got to make sure you go to Miss Short Dollar on YouTube and check the video out in its whole entirety. Right, 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 you know, right. That. And I appreciate you, uh, line, lady love, tuning in and everything. But that insurance policy is a big thing because a lot of times people really don't take the time to look it over. Because mm -hmm. again, like, look, I can't afford that, but. Two or three, can you get it down to this? Can you get it down to that? I've heard it. I felt it. Hell, I had to say it before a different right. time. And you don't really think about it to what? Your ass get burned. Until you need it. Like, damn, man, I ain't got a rental car. No, you didn't have that on there. Right. Or you didn't have you know, certain things. You're like, what do you mean? <laughs> and a lot of times, man. When, I think people get confused when they say full coverage. They think, and I learned this from sleep. They think if full coverage is full coverage. Like, it covers and it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily cover rental cars and, you know, and when Slick was getting insurance, she's like, man, I always make sure my such and such, this, 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 this. I never thought of it like that. I ain't never went through a class like that. I always just point and click. Give me that. Thank you. Walk out the store. I had a, I had a tenant. I had a tenant one time that was in, I'm not a tenant, uh, uh, accounting client that was based, uh, I think it was in Griffin or whatever, but I remember they owned all these. It was an area of like different quads. You mm -hmm. know, they were running property, but they had each other like four. They had like 12. Mm -hmm. So long story short, they had just put these AC units, guy hit them up, tore all the cop out, you know, and, and I remember the, the, the guy was telling me, what's going on, Brother Dent, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, the guy told me, I remember the guy saying, look, I felt pretty cool, because he knew he had what? Insurance on it. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, he had the actual, uh, uh, the dwelling covered mm -hmm. for fire, storms, and things like that, mm -hmm. but he didn't have it for theft. Oh. And they didn't put that on there. Mm. So you talking about Four or five units, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think four or five uh, units, and the whole auto copper was out. Mm -hmm. Shit, now you talking about maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollars? Right, right. And all this stuff is sabotaged, and they got to come out of pocket for that. Cause he didn't have coverage. Man, he, he, he had to just them, you know, eat it and lose his cribs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This ain't like recent stuff. This right. is like early 2000, maybe you know, 2010 maybe the latest. Copper and stuff. I was yeah, saying. exactly. But but he, but he was going back to the policy. He didn't have it on there. He just thought because I had what full coverage mm -hmm. on it that it was covered. But they told me theft would have been the added addendum. That's the actual update that you have mm -hmm. to put uh, put on there. Mm -hmm. Typically now, because there was a big fallout with a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of time, uh, uh, most of them have that on there. Mm -hmm. But it is a, uh, a main thing, guys. I will tell you, if that's a rental property, your man, you better make sure you got theft on there. Because if somebody breaks into your house, mm -hmm. don't assume that because you got a mortgage with insurance on that, that theft. So make sure you check that. So mm -hmm. I just want to let everybody know that if you haven't to check to make sure theft is on uh, on that because somebody can break into your house 
and certain things ain't covered. Just like certain things with storms, it may just be. Uh, that's a tricky one. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Well, that's what it's I'm tricky saying. Tricky with that. Yeah, but that's why I say you need to just have them conversations with that. The hail, wind, lightning, things like that. Some things are covered, some ain't. But you know, uh, uh, again, we, we can get caught in them numbers and miss out on some things that, like, you don't think about it till it's too damn late. Or till you stuck with something that you can't get fixed. On okay? that, on that, on that rain and stuff, you know, those insurance companies tricky on that. Cause they'll say if it floods, they'll say it's a natural disaster. You like, no, nah, the rain caused the flood. It didn't just start, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and it all depends on who you got in front. Right, of you. right. That shit really depends. When you start trying to explain and argue, man, whoever you got on the, on the phone with you, that's the thing about it. Cause like I said, man, you in your mind, you actually got full coverage. But it's, it is deemed under the law with the basics. Mm -hmm. But them other things like theft, certain storms, certain storms, certain fire, that shit ain't all on them. Mm -hmm. You know, even after 9 11, nobody had no coverage for damn planes running to right. buildings. So a lot of folks got a bad with that, you know? So a lot of things we got to kind of think about. What we have now, we have something called mass shootings. Mm -hmm. All this stuff, man, look, you know, don't think about that kind of stuff. So depending on what you're trying to show, trying to cover, it's very, very important that you make sure. That you look at your insurance policy to make sure you have everything covered, okay? Yeah, you might say something like that. Uh, Lion Lady Love too says full coverage is not what it used to be. High uh, used to be higher amount of the premium, the lowest the bill. My deductible is a thousand, and my house's deductible is two thousand. Um, so she's saying it's not what it used to be. They've changed up some things on the full coverage. Um, and Slick says that um, a tree went through my aunt's house. And that's true. A stick went through. A tree went through her us house, crashed the kitchen, everything. This is house insurance, life or house insurance, and uh, it still wasn't enough to fix a house. There were certain parts of the house that didn't get fixed. Well, you know, I just went through that two years ago. Right. Well, it just finished. It took them over a year to do the repairs. Right. Uh, fortunate enough, I was able to cover everything and stuff like that. But again, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You got to be an assessment because if you got a house that you deem and they they made or may not send assessors out there to look at your house because you may have a dwelling. Because I know my rental properties, I think they go out every two years. Mm -hmm. They'll send somebody out there to just see, okay, like, is this roof or fine? If, if they see certain things messed up with the house, they'll send me, hey, listen, we're going to give you about uh, two months to get these repairs done. We're going to drop your rental, uh, uh, the insurance on these rental properties. Mm -hmm. got to get certain repairs done. So if you have, you know, uh, coverage for $75,000 on something, and you know, listen, you know, we've had uh, inflation. We've had updates to actually the value and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It may not be covered. So you got to make sure that you be savvy. That's why I want to have this actual show. Because a lot of times people just don't know. They think they know. Mm -hmm. Because when you hear terms like full coverage, it's going to cover the full thing. No hell. <laughs> there are caps on everything, right? right? So we need to make sure we kind of verse with it. And again, guys, if you don't know, find somebody that can help you. Find somebody can help you because most of the time, again, we get we, we, we go into it what we can afford, mm -hmm. and be prepared for the answer. Like, okay, cool, we can update it, but it's gonna be three hundred dollars more in your insurance. Mm -hmm. I can't afford that. Hey, this what you ask for. Hey, what I'm just saying, right. like, you gotta be realistic. You know, uh, we're doing that. Sometimes you can't afford not to pay certain things. Right, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I dig it. I understand everybody got different things going on, but you know, it, you need to try to make yourself as equipped as possible with all the information that you need. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to be able to do. We homeowners, we, we, we're looking at health insurance, we're looking at uh, car insurance. We want to be able to gather as much information as possible, and then we can make decisions about what we do and what we don't need, mm -hmm. right? You know. So that's why I want everybody to be thinking about. Again, tonight's show we're talking about Insurance 101, your complete guide to understanding insurance. This is the Dollar Hour. We're streaming out live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. The main hook is the Mr. Short Dollar YouTube channel. You can Google it. You'll see this handsome face pop up. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> so even if you came in the middle of the show, you can go to the YouTube channel, see the video in its entirety, and also all the other 700 videos on the YouTube channel. The next thing we're going to go over is basic what, what coverage. So people hear what's covered. And when, when you hear the term coverage, coverage just refers to the protection provided by the insurance policy. It specifies the type of losses or risks that the insurance company will compensate the policyholder for if they occur. Different insurance policies offer different coverages based on various risks, such as health issues, car accidents, like we talked earlier, property damage, and more. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially a lot of times you get in business, depending on what type of industry you got. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start thinking about like you got a club. Ooh, nightclub. Ooh. Yeah, a nightclub. 
where they got shoot them up, bang, bang, and they say in the club. Or, right, right. You know, those kind of things, restaurants, mm -hmm. with fires and all that kind of liability. People slip and fall. Slip and kitchen. fall and all that kind of stuff. Daycares and stuff mm -hmm. where you can got kids can get injured, they may have an attack, excuse me, or certain things. That stuff is through the damn roof. Mm -hmm. And again, if you get into it, like, look, I can make some real nice, my pie is kind of like patty pie. <laughs> and that's your thought process of getting into this shit. You ain't really thinking about. Right. Hey man, look, all this other kind of stuff. Right. And, and, and coverage is something else. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and sometimes, sometimes depending on your risk profile, again, that risk profile being, you know, just looking at all the things in regards to your health, your industry, what we said, motor wreck, whatever. So they may not cover certain things. That's true. Uh, Lion Lay Love says during the freeze back in December, people pipes were busting. That wasn't included in the coverage. Mm -hmm. And that's something. Mm -hmm. And that's something. But see, the thing over there is just you could have got it updated, mm -hmm. but you don't think about doing it. Right. Why? Because in the state of Georgia, you don't typically look to get a freeze or denim or something like right, that. Right, right. But it'll be, say, you go up north, those things happen, you know, maybe a little bit more common. Right. They're going to have that thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right? So typically, they are offer certain things that are actually uh, regionally mm -hmm. more common with doing certain things. So they got that problem here, the pipe busted here. Yeah, well, I mean, shit. <laughs> I was there the other day. Uh, <laughs> and that doing that freeze. And, uh, yeah, luckily she has an uncle that does that plumber. So we, it wasn't that big of a deal. But, yeah, it was at first. A lot of stuff we don't think about. Right. It's just like if you're staying on the coast, let's say in Florida, California, you're going to see more uh, uh, hurricane policies and things like that. You may see some flood. You probably see more if you're near like a... Uh, flood zones, mm -hmm. insurance things covered with that and stuff like that. But outside of that, if you're not near a flood zone, near an ocean or a lake, anything like that, um, a flood uh, 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 addendum that's not gonna be put right. on there. Right. You know. And if you have like a creek or something across the street that you're not thinking about, you got to bring that to you know the insurer's attention mm -hmm. to do that. So that's the thing. A lot of times we don't think about, but when it happens, it hurt us bad. Uh, why are you speaking of the flood plan being close to Florida? You know, I, something I found out recently, uh, and I thought about it, but I didn't really, they confirmed that insurance companies have insurance companies. You get what I'm saying? Because in Florida, the insurance company is pulling out. Farmers is pulling out, like uh, Line, Line Lay Love says, because their insurance won't insure them for Florida. Yeah. So they have no insurance companies. It's all state funded now. Typically, the way insurance—I mean, this is not what it shows. Of just knowing, I work for an insurance company. We were a self-funded insurance company. Mm -hmm. Typically, the way insurance insurance companies are funded is that they'll get all these different brokerage firms, or whatever, that actually specialize in funding insurances, and they'll take those actual premiums that they have, pool them together. They may be different mm -hmm. insurance together, and get them put in uh, uh, different brokerage firms, and get you know. They need hundreds of millions or billions of dollars to kind of do it because at the end of the day, if you start looking at it, nine times out of ten, most people are not going to have a catastrophic loss with a car accident, a fire, things like that. But you got so many people paying those premiums, they can take that dollar amount, put in certain brokerage or, or, or vehicles or whatever. It's growing at enough that the actual uh, uh, dividends or interest rates that the actual product is growing at is going to be much bigger than the actual premium. Mm -hmm. When they're writing bad policies, i.e. the people that have you know, a history of losses, a history of tickets, things like that, that's when things kind of work against you. Okay. And that's what we're going to get back to those actuarial people, those people that actually focus on those kind of things we're doing it. But typically on the bigger scale, the lab saying they insure it, you know, those, that's how a lot of them self-funded. I know when I, the company I work for, uh, we dealt with most of the counties in the state of Georgia. And uh, that's how we, we self-funded mm -hmm. with doing that. We just use certain, you know, there are companies out there that actually help pool in those particular funds. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, just the amount that's invested, those actual disbursements, the, the interest or the dividend from that, is usually can cover, most of the time, can cover your losses mm -hmm. on an annual basis okay. and everything we're doing it. But it's just a, a funky way they can take that profile, get the right amount for you to pay in the premium, and it'll work out. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing that and stuff like that. A lot of math, a lot of math, a lot of math. Hey, parents, if your kids do math, you need to push them. Right. They pay a lot of money. And I know damn well them guys do a whole lot of work. Right. They get paid a lot of money to do one plus one. Uh, the next thing we just talked about covers. The next part is deductible. And uh, I remember me and PJ, PJ had a little fender bender about a month ago. We was in, we just talked, man, we were just talking a little while ago about deductible. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, he was like, what is this? What is that? You know, we just, and I went through the whole little one-on-one with him with that. But in essence, I know a lot of people, when you buy an insurance, they'll tell you, like, you know, what Lion Lady Love said, you know, typically, the higher your deductible, the lower your payment. Mm-hmm. The lower your deductible, the, you know, the actual higher your payment Payments may be is. with doing it. And so, what a deductible is, the initial amount the policyholder must pay out, or must pay out of pocket before the insurance coverage kicks in. For example, if you have a car insurance policy with a $500 deductible, you have to pay the first $500 of repair costs for your vehicle, and the insurance company will cover the rest up to the policy limit. I say again, up to the policy limit. So again, the deductible is the first amount that you will pay uh, towards that coverage getting kicked in. So you have a $500 deductible, you pay the $500, and then the actual insurance company will cover the rest of it up to that cap that's already written on that policy amount. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. Yeah, I, you know what? I wasn't very versed in insurance. I'm going to be to her credit. Slicky versed me on this insurance because mm-hmm. her deductible is zero. Okay. And I was like, why would you? And, and she showed me one time her car got broken into. They stole all her stuff out of her car and she called the insurance company and they, within a week, they sent her a check for what was in the car. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Busted window, everything. They fixed everything on the car, and, her, and she had to pay nothing out of her pocket. But she, you know, she pays a little bit more a month for her insurance. But I was like, wow. So you ain't got to pay no, no money. And she's like, no. Okay. <laughs> Tra- transparent moment. What I was just talking to uh, P Dog about. P J was just sitting there, like that. I don't, you know, he wasn't at fault. Somebody bumped into him. Insurance said five hundred bucks. Can't get other folks insurance. This, that, and that. And I'm trying to just tell him, hey, listen. You worried about a five hundred dollar deductible, right? Me and you can fix that, but my point with him was, you worried this damn bumper might be two thousand dollars, right? That headlight might be damn six seven hundred dollars, right? So in your mind, you know this may be because you don't see too much physical damage, right? Or it's just like a crack in the park, it will be way more. So when you're riding down the expressway, uh, a month or two from now, and you don't see some of the underlying damage, mm-hmm. and you know the, you've went so far out because like yeah, it'll be okay. Now they're not going to even honor it because it happened that far back. Because they do have a window. Why you didn't report this early? Right. You know what I'm saying? How long that'll be that vary from company to company. But you sitting there blowing this shit off. We're doing it. And there may be some underlying issues that I can't see initially with doing it. And you'll end up paying way more money. And that's the thing I'm sitting there like. You don't get caught up in, you know, what you got to come out of your pocket. $500. Exactly. Right. You know, $500. But damn, bro, this damn... $4,000, $5,000 Four, five thousand dollars in repairs. Mm-hmm. They got to get done. Do you have that? You know, they look say that the, that the headlight costs a thousand dollars a piece. Um, let me go over a couple of the, the uh, statements. Lady Lionel says the State Farm cancel her insurance because of her dog. He was a child. I don't know why they, they can cancel it because of the dogs. Yeah, they got they got like five dogs that's on the list. You can't have on there. Oh, really? Uh, my, yeah, because uh, my actually uh, my insurance guy, you know, he listened to the show. Me and have a, you know, me and had a conversation. He explained that uh, pits, Rottweilers, uh, it's like five or six dogs. That you can't have. Yeah, one you can't. You, they don't even want you having a property dwelling. Oh, okay. Yeah, they don't even want to have, want you to even have those. And you gotta probably get some kind of another expensive addendum. And, and and if you don't have, you will find out. God forbid something happens. She said it costs her a lot of money. Yeah, I got I, I, a lot of money. I can imagine. But they got a list. They have a list okay, of okay. dogs. I just never heard it. I wanted to go back to that statement. And I think majority of it, majority of homeowner policies uh, uh, have that on there. List them dogs. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes, majority of homeowners. I just learned something today. Like, yes. you can't have some, like, you going to tell me what kind of dog I have? Miles? I pay the mortgage on? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, because wow. Because at the end of the day, they're going to bite somebody. They know you ain't got the money. Right. So who am I going to do? I'm sure. Sure. There you right. go. Right. There you go. There you go. Mm. And so that's the thing, where, you know, and, and, and if you don't, you know, the mortgage has to have insurance, uh, insurance on right. that. So your insurance company to drop you. Now you got to go through the mortgage company. They charge you probably two or three times More. the amount because you got to go through that little funky spot. So make sure you do your research. And do that. I say always, when you make any kind of uh, decisions, I understand everybody got it. Different money situation. What's this free free spirit? Uh, fifty sixty one. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. That's a true statement. Appreciate that. Appreciate. It. Thanks for tuning in. That's on TikTok. Uh, we can't get caught up a lot of times just that month. We got to pay here each, each month. Mm-hmm. I understand everybody got different financial things, but right. you got to understand uh, when things happen, you got to be realistic about it. So I know we see that. Hey, listen, I can't afford that deductible. Like you just said, you know, uh, we're doing it. 
oh, I can't afford that monthly payment. Let me get a higher deductible. You got to be realistic. If something happens, are you going to be able to do that? Mm -hmm. Or you can be riding down expressway with the damn hold though You see them folks, man, like damn Crubber Hook them punch their car <laughs> on a 2023 <laughs> whatever and the whole damn bumper caved in. You know, like damn, you know what I'm saying? Cause they, they don't always want... said they kept the check. <laughs> I don't even know they went that damn far. Right. <laughs> I don't even know they the whole there. the whole trunk is in the back seat. <laughs> Not a 2023. Right. <laughs> what, the, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Right, like ain't nobody see your ass. This shit just driving and sparks and shit on the freeway. <laughs> they kept that check. That's what they said. They kept that check. <laughs> they said people need to know that what comprehensive insurance covers. So absolutely. That's why I say. It. When you're looking at it, you got to make sure you, you savvy enough to not just be so steady. And, and again, the reason why people don't because they're so focused on what I got to pay a month. Right. And I and I get it. I get it. I understand. I need this car. I got to get this house. I got to get it. And I, I really can't do all you this. Know, do all this. Right. I, I understand. Right. And sometimes you can't afford not to skip it. Uh -huh. And a lot of times when we have financial uh, uh, mishaps in our life, is usually due to things that we skipped. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We got Mr. Charlie to put the lights up because he was, he was cheaper. <laughs> that whole damn house on damn fire. Mr. Charlie. You know what I'm saying? Always cheaper. Got your cousin coming and do the damn plumbing. Right. Water and shit coming all out the damn sink. You know? You right. can't call right. you, you can't call you baby dad for every damn thing. You set your shit on fire. So you gotta get a professional. Yeah. You can't afford it, man. Let me tell you something. And I'm speaking with personal experience. Cat I know, man, I ain't gonna say a name, man. We cool brother, man. Mm -hmm. I called myself, and this man, this about, maybe I was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Young guy, trying to just save money. Getting close, shit is high. Get this guy, cause you know, you talk to average handyman, it ain't shit they can't do. Right. So they ain't gonna, knowing they ain't never did plumbing, knowing they ain't never did electrical, now they make him put a damn dough knob or something on. Right, right. Cause they work part time box. in the apartment, right? right? <laughs> but they gonna tell you like, they can just do everything. Right. You're like, okay, cool, cause you see what, he got some, Paint on his hands and shit. His clothes dirty. Yeah, clothes, clothes dirty and stuff. <laughs> man, go in there and tear your damn house up. Now you gotta turn around, pay somebody, you know, um, you know, two or three times that to fix not what you needed at first. We just need a repair. Mm -hmm. You gotta give him to fix his shit. Just then get it the back the way you want. Right. It, you so know? you're paying double. So sometimes, like I say, man, listen, I can just, you know, I'm speaking out of personal experience. Trying to be Mr. Cheap Dog. <laughs> Blew up in my damn face. And then, and then a lot of people don't realize that the professionals have their own insurance. So if they come in there and mess up something in your house, the insurance going to pay for them to fix it. You got a cheap landscaping guy. Mm -hmm. them you don't put all the thousand dollars in damn uh, uh, the irrigation system to get you a lawn water. Man, you want to go with this guy who ain't got a legitimate company they run over your shit. They can't afford to fix that. Right. Hell, they need that damn money you need to give them. <laughs> right. You know, so right. you got to be smart about that, man. And all of us have done it. Not I said all, yeah. but a lot of us have done it. And I'm just saying, our personal experience, some shit you just can't afford not to pay. Right. You want to leave that at that. Uh, the next thing we're talking, again, we're talking about insurance 101. Um, getting a better, a uh, complete understanding of what insurance is. The next facet of insurance we want to talk about is claim. Remember, guys, if you came in at any time, you know, in the middle of the show, you can always go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube and check this whole video out in its whole entirety. So I will recap all the different pieces that we talked about, you know, just exact talk about it at the end of the show. But uh, if you just came in the middle of it, you can always go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube. Just Google it, and uh, the channel will pop up and you see this video in its whole entirety, okay? The next facet we're talking about insurance 101 is claim. A claim is a request made by the policyholder, i.e. you, to the insurance company for the compensation for a covered loss or an event. When the insured uh, event occurs, the policyholder contacts the insurer to initiate the claim process. Mm -hmm. And uh, a thing that I learned a couple of years back, I got a friend of mine works for insurance, uh, through insurance litigation. She explained to me, because I was just like, because the, the thought process is that if you have an accident and you're not at fault, it does not affect your insurance. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Because just like when you, in, uh, when you get insurance, they pull your motor vehicle record, they also pull something what's called a clue report. Mm -hmm. And a clue report lists your insurance claims is either three or five years, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But all claims, regardless if you're at fault or not, mm -hmm. regardless you're at fault or not, but as long as you're on a clue report, that's still a deem, regardless of the claim that you did. It's on motor vehicle. 
Well, it's or with insurance. All insurance. It's with insurance. Okay. The motor vehicles just speed and accidents right, and right. stuff like I'm that. I'm saying that the clue report is on motor vehicles on all insurances. Oh, it, it's gonna be on all. It's gonna be on all. Yeah, yeah, just okay, claims okay, and everything okay. like that. But you know, I'm pretty sure a car. Uh, when they put on cars, they ain't gonna worry about mm -hmm. that. They're just looking at the claims of that. You know, mm -hmm. we're doing it. So you gotta just something just be kind of you know just thought processing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're doing it because a lot of times people will say, well, listen, guy bumping from behind. I'm finna get paid. I'm finna get paid. And you turn around and get your couple thousand dollar check. But then you start looking. Damn, my whole premium went up. Mm -hmm. and you know, you still have an average, what is it, 4% increase mm -hmm. each year or whatever, to, you know, or, or what they're doing. But you're like, man, this shit, more, this shit went up 10%. Then they're going up a little bit more. Because you and these claims were filed, even though you weren't at fault. Mm -hmm. But just keep it in mind that Clue Report is going to be still listed on there. If somebody knows the exact. Uh, uh, tenure of being on tour report, please chime in. Uh, uh, Slum Beautiful said it's not supposed to affect your rate if you are not at fault, but that's what the clue report is about, that's right? That's what the clue report is, is, is about. Enough, uh, you see, go ahead and finish talking. And, 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 uh, if they got it, but again, you know, they might call, call, it call your insurance company. Call insurance because what happens is a lot of times your, your policy goes up and you may think it just mm -hmm. went up. It's not going to go, you know, like if you get a ticket mm -hmm. and then you'll get a, like a letter, a notice. Uh, well, this has happened to me, and I think this is kind of common. If you get a ticket today, you may get a letter from your insurance company. Your premium immediately goes up. Mm -hmm. Like, it may just be a couple, whatever it goes up. It immediately will go up because it's adjusted because they got that letter from the uh, motor vehicle. Uh, the motor vehicle right for, uh, from the uh, motor vehicle office, mm -hmm. and they'll update it immediately, right? So it may be a week later, your insurance goes up. Mm -hmm. The clue report is not going to get adjusted until that annual premium. It's not going to adjust to the annual premium. What you about to say? Clue report. Comprehensive loss underwriting exchange. There you go. And uh, what's on there? What it contains? Your name, your date of birth, your policy number, date of loss, type of loss, amount the company paid, description of the covered property, property address for homeowner's claim, and specific vehicle information for auto claims, payout money, set up a file for a possible claim, formally deny a claim. So this is what companies report. That's what's in the report. Uh, how insurance companies use the clue report. An insurer may request a clue report when you apply for coverage or request a quote. The company uses your claims history or the history of your claims as specific property to decide if, if it'll offer you coverage or how much you'll pay. Insurance company studies show a relationship between the past claim and the claims you report in the future. So basically, it's just like a credit report for insurance. Yeah, just basic claims on there. Right. And here's the deal, like I said, is you look updated on the annual side. Mm -hmm. Not like when you have an accident, you hit somebody and it goes up with that. You, when you got your annual premium, so you may not even be conscious mm -hmm. uh, of doing it. But typically, I think it's, it's uh, three to five, three or five years. I know it's an odd number that it stays on your record uh, with doing it. So I'm just saying, guys, sometimes in the grand scheme of things, it may cost you more. You may like, okay, I got paid on this particular accident, but in the grand scheme of things, it may cost you more. In the long run. In the long run, we're doing it. Because I know they're having my stupid ass. Uh, I'm just, be, just being very honest right. with you, we're doing it because the way my policy went up after I got my check, I mean, in, in a matter of three years, hell, I had already, I'm paying more, you know, because of that increase, if that hadn't happened. And until she had told, explained that to me, I didn't really understand it. And she said, hey, listen, you know, and so I know I think one of them cycles in it, because Unfortunately, I got, you know, I've never really been, you know, knock on wood, been at fault. But, you know, sometimes it looks like you can't be this damn unlucky. Everybody keep hitting your ass. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Right, you, right, you know, yeah. so. And, and unfortunately, hell, I was. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in their eyes, they're covering uh, their insurance. So you just got to, you know, take that how it is. But that's one thing I would say. If you have any questions, call your insurance. Come have a conversation with them. Just find out. You can, you can probably get access to you. I don't know the accessibility they give it. I think that's just something more of actual uh, that's provided to the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know if they get it out uh, publicly to anybody. Like you can pull it like your DMV record, I don't know. They, but, say, uh, they say, you ask how long you've done it, they say it collects and reports up to seven years of auto and personal property claims. So seven years, so just like just like your credit report, yeah. seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Seven yeah. years they put they, they report that stuff on there. Man, I'm just, I'm just telling people, I know a lot of people be free willing trying to do it. It uh it is not a, it doesn't go up like your 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 drive work like getting tickets and stuff like that. So you know? I'm Slum Beautiful says that uh, even roadside assistance is a claim though. Yes, yeah, a claim, man. And, and uh, AAA 
drop me. Because, you know, again, you know, I got the kids on there, nah. got the old lad cars, and they probably damn, I know what's happening. Right. Their friends lock their cars in. Hey, we got Triple Eight. I like mm -hmm. your friend's cars, uh -huh. your friend car breakdown, you getting their shit told, mm -hmm. and I get a letter in the mail, they're not renewing it. No. Uh -huh. You know, and, and I know what's going on. Right. <laughs> right, right. I know what the hell's going on. You right. Know? So, you know, they're saying those particular claims, and they dropped me. Mm -hmm. Saying that with the amount of claims, ain't nothing wrong with my shit. <laughs> right. But right. I'm on my kids up under there. They use it. Hey, 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 hey. They get. Oh, that's one little thing, little girl. Oh, my kids locked in. Don't worry, I got triple A. I got triple A. Yeah. <laughs> you had triple A, MF. MF, you had triple A. So, <laughs> the other damn conversation, I just had one. My guy. Right. <laughs> MF, you had it. <laughs> Again, tonight we're talking about. Yeah, I don't look flat with yeah, triple A. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know what you think of that. <laughs> you ain't got it no more. Get in a nice show. We're talking about insurance 101. You complete got to understand the insurance. We're going through different facets of insurance. Uh, again, which is a dollar hour. Hosted by your truly Deontay Burden. If you are coming in the middle of the show, make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Whatever platform you're on, go to Mr. Short Doll on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. You can see this whole video in its whole entirety, along with the over 700 videos on the YouTube channel. And also, along with the over 150 grand opportunities for any small business owner looking to get assistance with funding. In addition to uh, finance playlist with an uh, entrepreneur playlist. A lot of tons of great information on that YouTube channel. So go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube, subscribe to the channel when you get there. The next facet is underwriting. The underwriting basically is just the process that insurance companies use to evaluate the risks associated with insuring a particular individual or entity. This assessment helps determine the premium amount and the insurability of the applicant. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, especially when you start going into uh, uh, a lot of times people hear underwriters a lot when they're looking to get loans, especially like a, a car loan or specifically like a, a mortgage. Okay. We're doing the underwriters, they're pretty much, they're taking all the data. They're the ones that gather the data from the uh, motor vehicle record, the mm -hmm. clue report, all this other kind of car information. Tell you if you're insurable. If, if you're insurable or it, uh, come up with that price. Okay. Those okay. are the ones, those are the people actually getting that. So that's what it comes uh, with doing it. Usually sometimes with software and stuff, they can kind of, Get the, the agent can probably get a lot of stuff on the surface to mm -hmm. say hey, if you can or can't go to start going through the process because they can give you a quote. That's why you have sometimes where you get a quote of uh, $3,000, then it goes to the underwriter and may come back to 3200 or something like that mm -hmm. because the underwriter was able to maybe pull certain information and wasn't mm -hmm. successful or maybe a little bit lower. But that's what happened when the, under, the underwriter is the one that's gathering all these different information, pooling and making an assessment of what the premium is going to be. Mm -hmm. so that's what the underwriter does. The next thing is we're talking about risk pooling. The risk pooling is there. This is a thing that everyone's insurance goes through. That's insurance works on the principle of risk pooling. That's how insurance works, risk pooling, right? They're looking at many individual businesses pay premiums into a shared pool, and when cover and when cover losses occurs, the insurance company draws from that pool to compensate the affected policy holders. Like I was explaining earlier, right? Right. So right. You can, like say again, they you might get certain uh, 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 a lot of different maybe marine. Or auto or mortgage uh, insurance places. Mm -hmm. They actually maybe pool the funds together. They got this big brokerage company. They're putting all that stuff together. Cause my 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 hundred thousand, lab hundred thousand, another per hundred thousand. Then we got three hundred thousand dollars that we can invest in, mm -hmm. put in certain things. And the actual now what we get, we get an actual a dividend or a disbursement on certain things or an interest payment. That you know those amounts. When you start looking at the pool, we we done our risk assessment. We've had on a, a, underwriting. Chances are, if you know, if this person has a kind of accident, we're looking at, you know, they have, they have no DUIs, no tickets, probability of the accident, very small, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, basic car, nothing like that, nothing flashy. Chances of the car getting broken and stolen, very small. Right. But we still collecting this money, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're taking all these funds together. We've got this same house, we're in the same industry, we're pulling together. Now we got a bigger cat to get in bigger uh, uh, revenues with us on the actual investment side. That's how we're able to cover that pooling part, okay? Mm -hmm. That was a very fucking part about insurance accounting, understanding that side of it mm -hmm. in regards to, you know, that money, how those funds were set up, and how we could, we could see, honestly, if you was in any kind of risk or if you had, like, a big surplus. Sometimes, you know, you may have certain discounts available to you or you may get an actual uh, a rebate check back from your insurance company, depending on how them investments went on a particular year. So, it's yeah. something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, the next one, this is the key one, right? This is the last one, matter of fact. Uh, and this is why I tell parents you should be on your kids by mail. This is actuarial science. Guys, I was a finance major. Finance is pretty much, um, you know, we talk about accounting. Accounting deals with present and the past. Finance deals with present and the future. It's 
big math base, but the other side of that we had, um, and that house uh, of that was uh, risk management, was the insurance side, and actuarial sciences. Mm -hmm. And typically, your actuaries are either three three different things. They're either Asian, Indian, or African. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Typically, you have people that are actuaries. Okay. Asians, Indians, or Africans. Okay. Straight walking calculators. Okay. And actuary science is actuary science involves using statistical and mathematical methods to analyze and calculate insurance risks and premiums. Actuaries play a crucial role in design insurance policy and determine appropriate premiums. And I say, man, they come out of school making eighty thousand dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm right out of school. Right out of school. Mm -hmm. Right. I say they don't need you to be sociable. They don't need you to talk. You don't need to sell yourself. They have probably them one hundred percent hiring rate. But I'm telling you, dog. Like typically, I, you know, I've seen it. Most of them are Asian, African, or Indian. Mm. And I mean, just straight people have strong, strong math bases because mm -hmm. they're gonna use that statistical data where they can look at, you know, black, white, age. That's why they, they get that stuff. You, you can hear it, you know, and they use the explanation. You know, typically the most rare car gets stolen out of zip code. They're the ones that actually calculate to know, hey, that is that that zip code is a risk, you know, is a high risk, or whatever. But that's what those actuaries do. Uh, um, they come to that assessment. So we're gonna rehash everything, guys. Let me. I got a couple. One question. Sure. One question. Uh huh. A couple of statements too. Um, Ryan Layla says they look at how many tickets in the last five years. Uh, Slick says, why do they want all people in the dwelling to have the same insurance company? That's a question she asks. I think. Um, well, let me answer that. The, with the insurance company, I, I think well, well, it makes it uh, cheaper. They can offer because they can disperse it better. Uh, when you get to the, when we talk about the pool of it, mm -hmm. if you have um, uh, everyone in the same dwelling, I don't know if it even with the same dwelling, but just say if you have a, a, a similar coverages, mm -hmm. as far as you guys together in the same place, mm -hmm. uh, because it reduces the risk because you might share costs, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having multiple policies. You put more funds into a particular thing so they can make it cheaper okay. with doing that. You know, typically if you have like uh, homeowners insurance, auto insurance, things like that, it can be cheaper. Or if you add like a, one of your children in or something like that because you add more pool money uh, to the pot. Cause remember, like I said, just keep in, keep in theory, they're taking your money and putting it into a, another pot. Investing in it, other it, things. To, exactly, exactly. And keep in mind the way they're investing it, they're investing with other places and just going back into it. So they add more to it. We're doing it so it can just lower the cost of certain things they can put out to you. Uh, we're doing it because again, when we start doing the math on the statistical side, we start calculating it. You know, chances are we put more and more things in. I can offer a, 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 a cheaper product here because the amount of money you're putting in, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be as much for the coverage. Math kind of just changes the more you put in, the kind of less risk and things like that. How you feel about it, how you feel about it. Right. How it is, <laughs> is how it is. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so Some beautiful says uh, about the actuary signs, they make projections. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, man. I, I, mean, that's like, it. I, I, I never I never met a black, like some of those African American. Uh -huh. I didn't see too many white guys. Actuary yeah. signs. No, no. I didn't see too many damn white guys with finance majors. I mean, I ain't seen too many white guys. I damn sure seen my black guys. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're doing it. Why well, hell, black guy telling me there was finance major? I was like, whoa. I know. Hey, like, because ain't too many brothers. Because so, man, you got you to be so strong in math. That's what kicked me out of. That's what kicked me out of uh, chemical engineering. Yeah. I was gonna, I was chemical engineering down my first, my first uh, some two semesters of uh, college, yeah. and it was like I couldn't get, I could, I couldn't get the math. Like, just too much math. I, I I seen a post one of my old classmates posted. Uh, uh, why would a person need Pythagorean theorem? Why would that be important in your life? And everybody was chiming in. Yeah, that stuff ain't necessary. Why would you need in life? But the problem that you're looking at it, if you know that shit, your life would be a whole lot That's easier. <laughs> so you you look at it like, why do I need that? Mm -hmm. But you're not understanding. Like, listen, if you know that shit, mm -hmm. your life would be so much easier. Right. Because they pay you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't no I don't, you know, I ain't trying to boast, but I get paid these little amount of money. What right. the hell I got in between my ears now? <laughs> right, right, so that's right. what I'm saying. Like, uh, uh, a lot of times because we're not familiar with it, mm -hmm. we don't push it a lot. But uh, that, that STEM shit is real, man. I mean, it's a, they're underserved, but I mean, just if you got some kind of quantitative background, you got some familiar numbers, they will pay you a lot of damn money. Mm -hmm. just, I'm just saying, parents, like, listen, don't just deflect the hey, 
It ain't needed. Shit. Trust me. Yeah. Somebody need they will pay you a lot of damn money to do that. Yeah. A lot, a lot of money. And I know they strictly, I ain't even say nine to five. That shit may be ten to three. Mm-hmm. And it, man. <laughs> No weekends. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, man. Hell no. Hell no, man. Hell no, man. Yeah. I seen it that day, man. That, that's my feel, man. That they get paid, paid. Yeah. They get paid, paid, man. And they take those over to those uh, investment bank stuff. And then they get millions of dollars a year. When you start going to any kind of analytical side of any kind of company or whatever like that, mm-hmm. you know, that's what you mainly going to see in a way. Mm-hmm. African, Asian, and Indian. Mm-hmm. Just, just. Because the math is me. Right. That's because I mean, you go up to Georgia Tech and you ride down the street with Georgia Tech going on. Well, that's how you see. Yeah. That's how you see most of the Indians, Asians, you know what I mean? Again, in a, in a, in a, what it is is just that in the U.S., that's why they push it so much. Mm-hmm. Because they're underserved, not just even with, with whites. It's just Americans really don't push mathematics. So mm-hmm. that's why a lot of times, you know, we get a, we have to pull from other countries. Now, uh, those other countries don't push uh, social skills right. like we do. And everything, but again, that's a big segment where we kind of like stuck. You know, right. like, who needs social skills when I'm making six hundred thousand dollars a year? Well, 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 well you see, you you seen how you know, depending on another industry, with with, with, with the chip shortage, mm-hmm. how that affected you know just our whole auto industry was doing that. But we don't have the actual uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, Amazon had it. The actual. Uh, Employment, employee capital. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you got people that can work, but just can't do certain the skill level, ain't mm-hmm. got to do certain jobs, you just can't feel certain jobs mm-hmm. because the actual academic side ain't there. But that's a whole nother conversation we're doing that. People mm-hmm. getting their feelings, but like, like there are a lot of jobs that, that are available that just, they got to give them somewhere else because mm-hmm. we can't feel them with, yeah. with what we have with certain things, man. So, again, tonight we're talking about insurance one on one, your complete guide to understand insurance. Some of the key phrases that we, t- the key terms that we went over. And remember, guys, go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube and you'll be able to see the actual. What's up, Bob? My boy Brandon Bob. That's one of my dogs from Germany. Man, what's happening, B.O.B.? He still live in Germany? No, no, no. He, uh, uh, I think, uh, I know, I know Bob from uh, Sarkov area. But man, me and him was in Germany, yo. Uh, one of okay. my dogs, man. Uh, they lined up. Um, the comments on YouTube, the comments from Instagram do not be on YouTube, but if you go on YouTube and make comments, yeah, the, the comments still be there. No, the comments that are on, that's a good question. The comments that are on YouTube are the comments that's coming from the stream yard, which is Facebook, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. That's that's what and, and YouTube. Those are what's on the YouTube feed. So if you go there, you'll see that Instagram and TikTok has not integrated into stream yard yet. Mm-hmm. So we get there. We're taking when they when they actually do that, that'd be great. But as of right now, uh, and I'm surprised Instagram doesn't do it because Facebook don't like third party uh, 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 apps on it. The I, types of the apps. I got it, but I'm just thinking that because Facebook on it. That's why in my mind, I was thinking that. But uh, be surprised. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. They want you to be strictly mobile. Yeah. yeah. Insta- uh, Instagram is strictly mobile. They want you to stay mobile app. That's why you can't go live from a computer with them. Good point. Good point. Good point. Yeah. They lab- want you to stay in your hand. Yeah. The lab is the man. He knows that. <laughs> but you know, uh, with the terms we went over tonight, again, with the insurance one on one, your complete guy to understand insurance. The first one being policyholder insured. That's that's the I E U, the person that actually get the policy. The second was insured. That's the insurance company. That's the person that's actually going to issue out the insurance. The next one is premium, and the premium is the amount of money that you're going to pay on whatever basis, be it monthly, quarterly, annually, semi-annually, annually, uh, to, to be insured. The insurance policy is the actual legal contract that the policyholder and the insurance company will have together. The, cur- the Then we have coverage, which refers to the protection provided by the insurance company. Then we have the deductible. The deductible is the initial amount paid by the policyholder, so you start the whole process to get your coverage started, right? The next one was claim, and a claim is a request made by the policyholder with the insurance company for compensation for the covered loss and event, right? The under, underwriting is the process that insurance companies have to evaluate the risk associated with insuring a particular individual or business. Risk pooling is insurance company where they work together to actually pool certain uh, uh, people depending on their profile, where they actually uh, uh, have funds put together to match certain people with certain policies they need. Actuary science, again, that involves the actual uh, statistical or mathematical, ma- mathematical methods used to analyze and calculate certain risk or insurance premiums. 
listen guys, we all got to, you know, if we're, you know, not living in a cave, you probably have to have some kind of insurance associated with it. Again, I want to have the whole basis of having the show tonight was have that conversation with you guys, give over turns. I wish more people called in because I know a lot of y'all got questions, but I do appreciate all y'all that did chime in. But guys, remember, uh, uh, make sure you do proper due diligence and finding out what, can we just having this conversation tonight. I think a lot of people ask me, like, damn, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. And it happens all the time. It's not uncommon. And a lot of times, uh, uh, conversations at the barbershop, salon, cigar spot, and stuff like that, you're talking to a lot of people that actually participate, but not a lot of people that actually know. So I will say, make sure that you put yourself in front of people that actually answer the question. You call, call, you, you might, your agent might answer some of these questions. Mm -hmm. Look over your policy. You know, look it over, kind of find out. Don't let the time of the accident be when you find out you do not have rental insurance. Right. Don't let that be the time you find out you don't have roadside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, you on the side of the damn road, like, oh, I got it, I got it, and you don't damn have it. Your house get broken into, and they won't pay for, you know, the items and stuff was stolen. Lightning strikes your house, and they will not pay for the TVs. Right. And it happens all the exactly. damn time. So, again, I hope this uh, the show uh, helped you guys. Anybody before we uh, close it out, open the floor up. You know, I always open the floor up at the end of the show. If you got anything that's business-related and questions like that, you know, grants or anything like that, we're going to give you guys a couple minutes to get those in. Let me know if y'all got any uh, questions or anything or open the floodgates. You got to let me know. If you got uh, a question. No questions. Leila says her daughter-in-law was a lawyer. Now she's on the other side agreeing with the judge. <laughs> she also said, I don't know if this is a good statement to read, Leila, but I'm going to read it since she posted it. Uh, now her cucumber is with her. Her cucumber is with her enough and she just bought it yesterday. I don't <laughs> Uh, what you doing with that cucumber to make it with up? Okay. Uh, Dang. Uh, I'm still beautiful. Said she dead ass switch agents because of what you said previously. So yeah, she said good shit too. Good, yeah, good okay. stuff. Like, uh, I'm still beautiful. Said good stuff, guys. Okay, look. Well, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Remember, guys, if you came in the middle of the show near the end, feel free. Well, not feel free. Go to Mr. Show Dot on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. And hit that bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video. But definitely go to the uh, YouTube channel and check out the uh, video in its whole entirety. And also take advantage of all the other great information that is on the YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys. Love you. Thanks for all the love and support. And wasn't it pretty smooth? Yeah. You know, last week, man, we were talking about them damn baby dad and the kids and all that on Change Your Lives, boy. Folks were shaking in their boots. That's right. You know what I mean? So, man, we had, I had a blast tonight, man. Good show, everybody. But, Again, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for the love and support. Go to the YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Continue to uh, take advantage of all the great information that is on Mr. Short Dollar. I love giving out good information. Love giving out free information. Guys, remember, when I get them calls, this is free. <laughs> them calls is free. This is free. We start getting other stuff, that, so take advantage of it. Like we open up, shit, you can get down. You get the question answered now. Like These are perfect times to call in and do that. We give her that damn phone. It's a different story. They might want to pay for your service. But if you get if it, no, shit. Ah. Mm. Mm. But if, but if, if you do uh, later on do have any question or anything like that, I will say this: put your uh, go to the YouTube channel, put a comment to a line later love uh, question. When you go to the YouTube channel, you can actually input comments and questions. I am very active. I usually take no more than a day or so to get back. While I'm checking the feeds or the comments on the YouTube channel to ask if anybody got any questions or anything like that, okay? But listen, guys, thanks for all the love and support. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, you need, if you uh, 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 if you get a chance, also check out my other YouTube channel, Changing Lives, hosted by your truly Deontay Burton. Uh, take care of yourself. Love you all. Be safe, and I'll talk with you soon. <laughs>